Hola chicos y chicas, el examen de AP es el martes 11 de mayo a las 8 de la mañana y yo sé que tú estás listo para tomar tu examen, para tener éxito en tu examen, para pasar tu examen. Eh, en este video, I just want to go over like the whole structure of the test and at the end, eh, remind you of how to do your recording. So stay with me eh, because this is going to help you tons. Okay, so let's start with the multiple eh, eh, cho eh, choice, multiple choice eh, section. So, en la selección múltipla, the multiple choice is going to be divided into two parts. The first part is going to be only reading. There are going to be 30 questions and you will have 40 minutes. Now, what uh, text you're going to see? Uh, the same thing that we did in class. You are going to say some uh, articles, uh, announcements, advertisements, letters, some tables, uh, and then you will be asked about main idea, supporting details, uh, like trying to uh, infer the meaning of some vocab, identify the uh, author's point of view. One that you're going to say is el propósito, the purpose. ¿Cuál es el propósito del texto? That is a big one that you're going to see multiple times. Multi multiple times. You always want to think, why is this person writing this text? Uh, and then uh, demonstrate some understanding of cultural aspects. So there's going to be 30 questions. Now, I'm going to have to warn you, there are going to be difficult articles. And usually, students' average are going to be uh, scoring like around 55% in that multiple choice. So just bearing there, like go and try every single question. Don't give up. Don't think, oh my God, this is too hard because it is hard for everyone. And the statistics show that if you score in the entire multiple choice between 47 and 52, you have a chance. So this is not the time to give up. This is the time to like just move on, get it together. You can do it. Okay, so this is the reading part now. The second part of the multiple choice is going to be reading and listening. And in this one, you're going to have some, uh, some questions, some sets. There is going to be some articles or some charts plus an audio. And usually those sets have around 10 questions. The first four questions are going to be related to the print text. The other four questions are going to be related to the audio, and usually the last one or two questions are going to be related to both sources. Uh, and then at the end, you will have a couple of sets that are going to be only audio. So you will uh, listen to all the audios twice, so you have time to go over and check. Now, are they difficult? Yes, they are. But... Don't give up because the success is going to be in you staying with the test, doing your best. Every single question count. Remember, the students who score around 48 to 52 percent have a good chance to pass. So keep that in mind. Do not give up. Okay. So for the entire uh, multiple choice section, it's going to be around um, 100, no, let me see, 40 minutes. It's going to be like 95 minutes for that first part. So it's going to be like over one hour and a half. Okay, after that, you're going to have a little break, and then you start with the free response. Okay, here is where you're going to show your Spanish. Here is where you're going to grab any opportunity to show your Spanish. I know some of you may think, oh, my Spanish is terrible. No, it's not. No, it's not. As long as you can communicate and make it comprehensible, you have a good chance. So don't think that, oh my gosh, it's just, because it's not. It is not. You have been in a Spanish class for four years. You have language in your head just kind of like put away all those thoughts and just concentrate and be smart and just just give it all okay so this is the first task is the email reply we have done tons of this in class you are going to have 15 minutes so what you're going to do is 
In 15 minutes, you need to do both. You need to read the email. You're going to read the email and you're going to identify who is sending that email to you, who you are based on the email, like what is your identity in this email and what they're asking in the email. You're going to underline that and then you're going to respond to the email. You're going to start, it's formal, remember, we want to use usted. So you're going to start with estimado señor, estimada señora. Then you're going to say, gracias por su correo electrónico. And then you're going to respond to all the questions, right? Make sure that you respond to all the questions. That is the key. You need to respond to all the questions with some elaboration. So try to add one or two details per answer. And then ask at least one relevant question. And closing saying, atentamente... Claudia, um, you don't have much time. So when you respond to the email, you have to be very strategic because the task, what you have to complete is you need to be able to demonstrate that you understood the questions that they asked you, that you were able to respond to those questions and that you're able to ask at least one okay question. And then you will be between three and four or five. Now, how you're going to get five? You're going to get five with elaboration. Don't worry about uh, trying to use grammar complex structures. Don't worry about it. Just keep it very simple. Uh, when you write, make sure that you don't use long sentences. Long sentences, even if you write them in your first language, are much more difficult to write and to read. You are going to lose a reader when you write a long sentence much easier and faster than if you write short sentences and add transitional words. You know, además, eh, sin embargo, eh, por eso, igualmente, también. Okay, so use those words. 15 minutes, señores. So you need to just keep that in mind. That's your, your first one. Second one argumentative essay so this is the longest one and i want you to be fresh i want you to check it off i want you to be ready for this so in this argumentative essay you're gonna read you're gonna read to two sources and one audio so that you're gonna have three sources you're gonna have a prompt so read the prompt and the prompt is gonna be deben las escuelas prohibir el uso de teléfonos celulares por parte de los estudiantes o um, los personas, oh, you know, es buena idea que eh, sea eh, obligatorio usar máscaras. O eh, las jóvenes deben mantener sus tradiciones. So you're going to have a question, that's your prompt. And we need to make sure that you respond to that prompt, saying sí o saying no. It can be in the middle, but just make sure that it's clear. So understand the question, adopt the position, and make it clear. Then you're going to read Fuente 1 and Fuente 2. You're going to have six minutes, six minutes to read Fuente 1 and Fuente 2. Fuente 1 is usually an article, and Fuente 2 is a chart. You have six minutes. How? You read it, and you underline what you understand, and then you can use in your essay. You are not going to understand everything. You don't need to understand everything. You need to understand a couple of facts that you can use to develop your essay. That's it. So don't overthink it. You have six minutes, read it, underline it. You already have the idea. For the audio, which is source three, you're going to listen to, those, to that audio twice. That audio, audio has a little bit of um, preview, like introduction, uh, that is written. So read that carefully because that's going to give you an idea of what the audio is going to be about and it's going to help you understand the audio better. Now, if you understand one idea, there's one idea that you can use. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about what you cannot understand. Just focus on what you can understand. Now, after you read the two sources, six minutes, listen to the audio, two minutes, you're ready to write your essay. So uh, on a piece of paper, kind of like have an idea, okay, this is my, my uh, thesis, these are my three arguments, I'm going to use source one and two for this, source one for this, source three for three, and I start writing. State a clear 
thesis and use all the, so the sources to support your thesis. Paragraph one is your hook. Remember, sin lugar a dudas, el tema de los teléfonos celulares es muy polémico. I love that, that hook. It's great. Then you, you convey your thesis. Eh, you can say, aunque los estudiantes se distraen con los teléfonos celulares, eh, no eh, es bueno que se prohíban. And then a summary of your arguments. The development comes with paragraph two, three, and four using your sources. And finally, paragraph five conclusions. Do not use long sentences. Do not use long sentences. Use periods, punctuation, transitional words, one idea per sentence. You don't need to write long sentences. They're hard to write. They're hard to understand. Okay. Next one. Free response, simulated conversation. Read the script and the instructions. That is the hardest part. You are going to read this, the script at the beginning. When you read that script and that introduction, make sure that you identify who you are, who you're talking to, why you're talking to that person. You're going to look at the script and you're going to understand what you need to do when you answer. Circle those tasks and maybe brainstorm expressions that you can use como responde negativamente no lo siento no puedo o re responde afirmativamente sí me, me gusta mucho me encantaría o responde con sorpresa ¡Oh, verdad so just kind of like keep that in mind because when you start listening to the conversation and you need to start talking you cannot be thinking about that script. Just look at the script, kind of like put it in your head. Now, then you're going to start the task. Listen with attention the audio and look at the script. I advise you to have like your pen and kind of marking where you are so you don't get lost in the script and, and you know where you are in the script. Respond to the audio following the script. Connect with your personal experience. Sometimes they say, oh, ¿qué te gusta hacer después de clases? Tell me what you like to do after class. Don't make it up because it's so much easier to talk about your own experiences or the experiences of your friends than just making something totally uh, different. Uh, you need to speak for 20 seconds. If you cannot get to 20 seconds, that's fine. But make sure that you respond to the question or you address the task in those 20 seconds. Now, even if you don't understand, even if you don't understand what they're saying to you, look at the script, look at the introduction, and say something. Because silence is zero. Just say something related to the topic, and just, who knows? You may be lucky. But do not get silent. Just speak. Okay. Now, these are some... Uh, I'm going to move my video here. These are some uh, handouts that uh, you have for all the free um, tasks. And I want you to look at this, and I want you to pause this video, and I want you to write one word or expression per task. So this is for the correo electrónico. So which one are you going to use for introducción? Estimado Señor Pérez. Gracias por su correo electrónico. That's it. Just write it down. Really make sure that you get that, that you know that, that you can write that. Now, para contestar en relación con su pregunta, para preguntar, sería posible, me gustaría saber si, para elaborar, para despedirse, and other expressions. So look at this carefully and try to write one or two words or expressions per task that you really study over the weekend, that you have them in your mind. So when it's time for you to write that correo electrónico, you're ready and you don't have to think about that. This is ensayo persuasivo and we're going to do the same. Look at this, para citar fuentes. You're going to have to cite some of the sources. Now, cite a little bit of the sources. We want to, you to use your own language. Don't go ahead and just cite the entire source. But when you're citing your source, be specific. Según la fuente 1, según la fuente 2, según la fuente 3, según el video, según la tabla. Just get one or two 
from each box so you don't have to do and because those are going to be tasks that you're going to have to do uh, have them in your mind conversación simulada the same thing uh, they're always are going to ask you to greet saludar and they're always going to ask you to say goodbye despedirse so just kind of like choose one of these two and then uh, choose one or two from the other boxes so you have it in mind Comparación cultural, and I'm going to go back to the comparación cultural in a second. Comparación cultural, these are the same, just pause it and make sure that you get one or two expressions. I, I think I skip comparación cultural. Cultural comparison is a comparison. It's a comparison. You're going to have to, they're going to ask you a question, and they're going to say, ¿Cuál es la actitud de las personas frente al uso de las redes sociales en la comunidad hispana compara con tu comunidad. So you're going to be asked about a topic and compare. So read the topic, read your prompt carefully and make sure that you're going to address all the aspects of your prompt. Then you're going to have four minutes to prepare. You're going to draw a Venn diagram or a three column table on your paper and you're going to brainstorm similarities and differences. The biggest mistake the students make in the cultural comparison is that they share information but they're not comparing. You're going to start with a brief uh, statement and then you're going to compare and compare, contrast by talking about similarities and differences. So you can do this. Uh, I know it's a lot but you have it. It's just it's the last thing. It's after four years. Just let's pass the test. Okay. Now let's talk about the recording and I'm gonna make myself a bigger here so you can see this. Okay, so this is the recording that you are gonna use to record your simulated conversation and the cultural comparison. Those are the last two tasks of the free response section, okay? So when you're given this, you are gonna be asked to record your name. Here, on the left side, you're going to have this button that says on and off. So you're going to move it up and voila, is on. When you're ready to record, you're going to go to the other side, which is your right, and they have a button on the other side that says rec and say you're going to go up to record. So you're going to go and record. And it says, please wait. Okay. Now I know that it's recording because it, the light is blinking. So at this point, I'm going to say, I think I have to record my AP number. So you're going to say, my AP number is blah, 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 blah. Then you're going to be asked to pause it. So you're going to go to this little bottom and you're going to pause it. Click. How do I know that it's paused? Because my light is not blinking anymore, it's still. Okay. When I'm giving directions, they're going to start, start recording again and pause. So how you're going to pause is by clicking the bottom in the middle again. Now, during the simulated conversations, you're going to be talking five times. And the recording is going to ask five questions. You do not pause between your answers. You are going to let it run for the entire simulated conversation. Okay? So when they start the simulated conversation and they say, and pause your recorders, then you're going to click in the middle. And when you click in the middle, you need to click twice. One, two, and it's unpaused and it's recording again. So I'm going to do my entire simulated conversation. And I'm going to stop talking when the recording is talking, and then I'm going to do again. When the simulated conversation is finished, I'm going to be asked to pause it again. So at that point, 
I'm going to click once the bottom in the middle. Boom. Oh, it didn't pull. Did you see that? So I need to make sure that I go again and the light is still. So when the light is still, it's paused. When the light is blinking, it's recording. Then they're going to do the entire instructions for the cultural comparison. I'm going to wait my four minutes to prepare. And when that is over, then I'm going to unclick again and record my cultural comparison. See? One, two. Now is recording again. I'm going to finish my cultural comparison and they're going to ask me, oh, pause it. Now it's pause again. After I finish my cultural comparison, they're going to say save. And I'm going to get here in the back on the right and I'm going to go with the bottom. I'm going to push it down. Boom. Save. Now it says that I have one recording of MP3 and it's going to give me the amount of time. And it should be around three to four minutes if you did it correctly. And that's it. And then you have to turn it off and then you're going to give it to your proctor. So it is very important that you remember that they need one audio file, not two. That's why they ask you to pause it instead of saving it. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay, muchachos, I know that you can do this. You can pass the AP exam. Si se puede. Ánimo. Eh, yeah. Okay, chicos, buena suerte.